we have our participants. Hello, everyone. I welcome you all to our female clinician engineer webinar series. Today is the first day. This is an international female engineers that will present their success stories. And we just have some ground rules for our webinars. So just to warn you that these sessions will be recorded. Uh, we ask everyone not to turn on their cameras or microphones without uh, during the sessions themselves. And if you have any questions, you can always use the chat. We will be more than happy to answer all your questions. And of course, stay with us until the end to listen to our amazing speakers and for a nice group picture at the end. And most of all, just enjoy, learn, and have fun. So as for today, we have some amazing female engineers already with us. And my colleague, Banu, she will present our first speaker. Uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, I am Banu Kese uh, from Istanbul and I'm honored to be a host with Layana in the Clinician Engineer Hub webinar series. Uh, and today we are together with inspiring guests. Um, of course, it is a result of Dr. Neil Sharma and Layana's perfect planning and hard work. Thank you. And I would like to introduce our first guest without much excitement to you, uh, Yin Wang Lo. Uh, she's, she will talk about aerospace engineering. Uh, Yin is a manufacturing team leader at Rolls-Royce, where she is working with a special group involved in improving aerospace products in collaboration with the company suppliers. And in 2000, 2019, I think, uh, she won the Institution of Engineering and Technology Young Women Engineer of the Year Award. And uh, now um, she will uh, uh, present uh, something and I want to say welcome to Yin. Thank you. Thank you, Banu. Um, I am going to share my PowerPoint now. Great. Okay, I hope everyone can see this. Great. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, really nice to to, to see, you know, see you and, and, and listen to you today. My name is Ying Wan Lo and I'm a manufacturing engineer at Rolls Royce. And first of all, I just want to say that I'm, I'm really proud at, and, and really honored to be the first speaker to kick things off in this fantastic webinar series. Um, really good speakers lining up. So I'll start uh, with the session. Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about myself um, and I'll go on to share more about the interactions between aerospace engineering and the medical field. And I'll add some of my own reflections as well um, during the pandemic, you know, how did we respond? So I was born and I, I grew up in a tropical country uh, in Malaysia. So that's you know, it was a sunny place uh, near the equator. And after my A-levels, I decided to study mechanical design engineering in the University of Glasgow, and that's in Scotland. So I went from a very tropical country to a very cold country. And I did that for um, three years, and after that, I applied to do my master's in industrial systems, manufacture and management at the University of Cambridge. In January 2015, so about five years ago, I joined the Civil Aerospace Division in Rolls-Royce as a manufacturing engineer. And last year, and you know, like like um, <laughs> introduced, I, I was really fortunate to have won the IET Young Woman Engineer of the Year. So, so this is a picture of our one of our Rolls Royce engine. So at Rolls Royce, we call ourselves a power generation company. So that includes making jet engines, marine engines, and nuclear power generation. The example in this photo here is one of our Trent engines that power twin our aircraft. So big aircraft such as the Airbus XWB. The car company, uh, however, <laughs> it, the Rolls-Royce car company sold to BMW decades ago. So it's, it's not actually part of Rolls-Royce PLC anymore. So 
During my time in Rolls Royce, um, I've worked across different factories and different teams, and I've gathered enough um, fun facts about the engines that I can share with you today. So I'll start with how does you know an aeroplane engine works? How does it work? It, it's it works by and then sucking in air, a lot of air, um, very quickly, and, and it ends, if I can see if you see my screen here. So this is a fan blade that sucks in the air, and then the air goes through this core where it is compressed, very, you know, it, it, it compressed through the compressor uh, to become highly pressurized and passed through the combustion chamber. So the combustion chamber is where the air and the fuel is mixed together, and ignited to create an accelerated hot temperature air that comes out and hit the turbine. So the turbine works a little bit like wind turbines where um, it, it rotates and then it drives this shaft and again continuously drives this fan, fan blade in the front. So it's a cycle of continuously drawing air in. As you can imagine, it's a very powerful machine. Imagine the size of an A380 carrying 800 people in the air uh, for takeoff and landing, all relying on engines like this. And so I've worked in different, um, different factories that make different parts of these engines. And um, one of them is the single crystal turbine blade factory. So that's the one on the top right. So these turbine blades can withstand very challenging conditions during operation. For instance, when it's flying, the engine runs at the temperature above the blade's melting point. And these blades are also rotating at 12,000 revolutions per minute. So it's like maintaining an ice cube cold in an oven while it's, it's spinning at 12,000 RPM. And in terms of how does that work, so we, we actually, if you see the little holes on the turbine blades, we actually create some micron level holes in the blade and pass cold air through it. And that you know, create a thin film of relative, relative cold air, which is at about 400 degrees Celsius, to protect it against the thousands of degrees Celsius it is exposed to. Also to maintain the strength of the blade, the material is grew from a single crystal. So you won't find any grain boundaries in this part. And I've also worked in a factory that make combustion chambers. So that's the one at the bottom right corner. This is the part that makes us compress air with fuel and burns at the temperature a third of the surface of the sun. So it's thousands of degrees Celsius. And people don't really realize that when you're in a plane, right? Like when you take a plane to fly internationally, you don't actually realize that that's what the engine do. And this generates a, you know, a high level of power and propulsion to lift the aircraft like the A380. And again, special materials, special cooling techniques, and a lot of advanced design. So these are really cool products and I worked, uh, worked on it for five years and still a lot to learn. And at the moment, you're probably aware the industry is going through some pretty challenging phase, but always at the forefront of technology. In the future, I think it's going to be more focused on hybrid electric aircrafts with the attention on sustainability and the impact on climate change. So on hybrid electric propulsion, which I've also worked on the project briefly, is a completely different architecture and technology. But I guess that's a story for another day. Now I'm going to share um, what I personally find uh, interesting. So some of the underlying principles and similarities between, uh, that applies in Formula One uh, racing, surgery, and also building a jet engine. And that, as you can see in these pictures, the coming th together of resource to a target subject, a highly planned operation, highly skilled and trained people, and often a race against time. So these processes stretch the limits and aim to be the most efficient possible. As a manufacturing engineer, my job is to look for efficiency savings in production processes, whether in our own plants or in our suppliers. So I look for best practices everywhere, including inside and outside the industry. So when I look at Formula One uh, racing, the fastest pit stopped is 1.8 seconds. And that means the team managed to change the tires, refuel, make mechanical adjustments, all that within 1.8 seconds. And that's all, and we all know that there's very little margin for error when you're doing Formula One racing. So trying to learn from that, we use something called Lean Six Sigma tool set to help us out, to help us in our factory to map out processes and find ways to optimize them. Some of the work we've implemented, including smart tooling that allows people to do jobs quicker and more accurate, 
and logistical improvements to make parts to uh, to prepare parts for assembly. So bear in mind, uh, for more than forty thousand individual parts needs to come together from all over the world and the supply chain just to make one engine. So having made those improvements, the next challenge for me is how do you scale up such operations? How do you do it for thousands of patients every day at every hospital? And at the Formula One pit stop, in the spirit of continuous improvement, they will, they will continue to challenge themselves and find ways to even shave 0.1 seconds um, off the operations in the pit stop. And that's the same for us. We don't stop at, you know, okay, this is good enough. You continuously try to make it better. So that's, that's the next challenge for us. And if you're listening, I, I encourage you to think outside the box, outside the industry to find creative solutions to the problems you face da daily. So then now on to um, collaboration, you know, global and, and this cross-functional approach. And I'll, I think I would like to give two examples of a project I've done in the past. So the first one is my final year project in university where I designed and built an ultrasonic drill for space application. An ultrasonic drill used piezoelectric that vibrates at ultrasonic frequency to drill into rocks in space. And the benefit of using this mechanism, unlike rotary drills, is that it doesn't require a lot of weight and downforce to operate. And that's useful in space when you, have, you don't have a lot of gravity like on Earth. So whilst this specific technology was uh, developed for space, um, it's all like because of the specific fe features that impacts brittle surfaces rather than soft surfaces. And think about it, it actually works pretty well when you want to drill on teeth and not to hurt the gum tissue. Then my next project is actually about open innovation and technology intelligence. It was a research I did for my, for my masters and it looks into how we can scan the horizon for new technology. While my experience is very much coming from an engineering point of view, I realized that these are, these are also very relevant to, to fields like medical and clinical practices. So what I personally learned through these pro two projects is that innovation is, is not a closed box. It flows between applications. Something that is invented for space can be used in dentistry and vice versa. So when we face with global challenges like we have today, we have to use a cross-functional approach. So it's not just in technology, but also sharing best practices. And in terms of you know, trends and what's coming in the future, as a manufacturing engineer, I see Internet of Things, Industrial 4.0, where sensors in the factories will play significant role in what we call the fourth industrial revolution. And I see the parallels of that with healthcare sector on this. So it's like digitization of your patient medical records, sensors and data in, in hospital operations, for example. And also imagine that, you know, for us, we have RFID tags on engine tooling inside our factory so we can track the location of these tooling wherever we go. And similarly, that could be applied on hospital beds. And one of the, the a friend of mine who worked in the tech company, uh, she's currently developing a state-of-the-art like breast pumps for women using intricate sensors and even lasers. So I think to stay ahead of the game, we need to see the bigger trends of technology and, and ride the wave. So finally, I just want to mention you know, a little bit about the manufacturing business and the communities responding to COVID and some of the reflections I've made. So first, I think you know, when, it, when it started, we see a lot of issues matching supply and demand from ventilators to toilet rolls, you know, demand increased significantly for manufacturers. Then we start to see companies working flexibly to repurpose their factories to make PPE or medical equipment within days or weeks when it usually would have taken years. And then you also see small 3D printing communities supplying key workers with PPE when there was a shortage. And all this was happening at a global scale. I know people are doing it, you know, everywhere around the world. So in this pandemic, I mean, we hear a lot of like how five years of innovation is happening within weeks. And often technology step change and disruptive tech innovation happen during major crises. And if, if I think, look back at the history, the development of aeroplanes accelerated significantly during the world wars and 
and most of our current big tech companies were founded in the financial crisis. So for COVID, I think, I mean, a lot of what we see is, is really, really tragic and, and many people are, are personally affected. But if I may point to some silver lining, I think we've seen collaboration that we've never seen before. And we're able to do, you know, international webinars like this where we connect people from all over the world. Um, and, and people are also innovating at speed and hopefully that will bring about another revolution of technology that will keep us safe and transform, transform our lives. So in this spirit, I'd like to finish my presentation and I hope you enjoy seeing the parallels between aerospace manufacturing and healthcare and hopefully inspire some, some great ideas among our listeners. That was great, Ying. Um, uh, at the same time, we, can, we are looking for the questions uh, from the participants. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, you can use the chat box. And I want to uh, Thank you, Yang, and I want to ask you something. Uh, I know that you were uh, planning to be a pilot or an architect or an artist when you were a child, <laughs> and you could combine everything <laughs> in one <laughs> job. It was great, and also I like that you said that uh, you like uh, you um, you enjoyed playing with Lego, and you are doing something that kind of a thing at the same time. So it was very great to see your background, your plans, your ideas, and the final results. It was very nice. Uh, to uh, listen to this and I really want to learn you are doing your dream job somehow mm -hmm. so uh, but uh, I want to learn uh, what gives you the most job satis uh, satisfaction uh, when you are busy with all this stuff I think the job satisfaction for people in my industry really is the product you will look at the thing you have built, like the pictures I've shared, and you can't not think that it's not cool. Come on, it is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, I think that's the ultimate job satisfaction for a lot of people in my industry. It, like the product is cool, and it's, it's always pushing the limits of what's possible you know, with technology. And that gives me, as an engineer, that gives me you know, a lot of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, my students ask that uh, ask ask me uh, to um, um, they want to learn that what were your favorite uh, subjects when you were uh, having your undergrad uh, degree? Uh, were you planning to work on this field, or were you enjoy uh, you were interested in with working with CAD uh, projects? For example, my students are mostly into uh, finite element models, for example. Yep. What kind of subjects did you enjoy when you were an undergrad student? Hmm. In my undergraduate, I think, well, I have to do CAD and I have to do FE, finite element analysis this is analysis as well. Um, yeah. So every, most of the mechanical engineering students do the same. Um, well, I like that because I also, well, I was in Formula student, so I did use CAD to design my own sports car which looks pretty cool yeah. so i quite like that you know you can actually design something and make your creativity work that yeah. way what i also like is actually materials because it was a time when we had um a lot of you know, a lot of breakthroughs in materials and i feel that you know with with materials we can actually make a lot of things possible mm -hmm. so for example we all know that currently battery technology is very important for you know electric cars and electric planes yeah. and yeah we're we're almost waiting for a new material to break through in that area mm -hmm. and then a lot of things will suddenly become possible yeah so that's yeah. another of my favorite subject yeah i see it's related for with many things there are many parameters so there are lots of uh, points to enjoy in your field yeah. <laughs> that's why i like i enjoyed listening to this and uh i know that you had um you have uh, worked on STEM issues also, uh, yeah. so you to encourage uh, female engineers, uh, female students, young girls. Do you want to say something on diversity in engineering field in your uh, job uh, environment and on research, for example? Do you want to say something to young female students, engineers, high school students, uh, just to the girls? <laughs> what do you want to say on STEM? Oh, to the girls like you can excel in any anything you want to do you know engineering or you know anything to be honest 
And in engineering, you know, frankly, we just don't have enough women, um, especially well, in the UK, but I think around the world it is a similar issue. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to say engineering gives you a very satisfying uh, career. It is very diverse. You know, mine, yeah. aerospace is just one example of where you can go if you do an engineering degree. People have gone on to design cars, you know, biomedical equipment. Um, there, there's just so many things you can do from just one engineering degree. So it's, it's very rewarding and very exciting. So I encourage more people to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I want, I have one more question. Uh, did you have a role model when you were uh, on your career path? Did you have a role model? I had many role models and they range from like cartoons to <laughs> real <laughs> <Yeah>. life people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the you know the main the main character in Star Wars, Ray. Um I thought she's quite cool. She can fly a plane um, yeah. and all that. Um, and when I was younger I like Leonardo da Vinci because he's he's like this you know genius and he, he can design lots of things and he knows he can draw, he can paint, he's an engineer, yeah. he's a scientist, he's an inventor, he's a doctor, he's like everything. Yeah. So yeah. that was another of my role model. And in real life, of course, um, there are female engineers who are more senior than me that I looked up to and, and I get support from in, in my career that, yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Great, that's true. Thank you very much, Ying. And uh, I, uh, I wanna thank you. Uh, and I will, uh, maybe uh, Liana can uh, introduce our second speaker. And re I really want to thank you for uh, answering my questions, your great presentation, uh, and your uh, giving inspiration to my students. <laughs> thank you very much, and the presenters. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much for having. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Ying. Uh, so our next speaker is Jigiaza Grover. She's the machine learning engineer at Twitter, and her uh, speech will be about opening doors to open source. She's an amazing person. She's a Red Hat woman in Open Source Academic Award winner 2017. She got this uh, Google Summer of Code alumna. She is currently a machine learning engineer at Twitter. Uh, she's an ardent open source and ML enthusiast, having worked in San Diego Supercomputer Center, National Research Council of Canada, Institute of Research and Development in France. Uh, and she is just a young woman that will present her work and what and how she came here. And I welcome Jigiaza to, to her talk. Thank you very much for being with us. Hi. Thank you so much, Anna, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I hope everyone can see my screen, uh, like the slides. Cool. Um, and not the speaker notes because I'm very poor at Zoom. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So good morning, everyone. Uh, at least it's morning in the US, this side of the world. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Uh, I, as Liana mentioned, I'm Jigyasa Grover, and I work as a machine learning engineer at Twitter uh, in the ads prediction team. So my job would be to basically show you ads which you like the most when you use Twitter as a platform. And uh, with that, I would like to congratulate all of you, uh, to anyone and everyone around the world uh, who has contributed to the word open source. Uh, the term open source has turned 22 this year, and we could not be more proud of how it has evolved and revolutionized the technological sphere. It is definitely a huge milestone impacting the global tech community. It has touched all kinds of domains at the present, and so many lives of developers out there, including mine. And when I say touched all kinds of domains, yes, I definitely mean medical science as well. I feel super honored to have been felicitated with the title of Red Hat Women in Open Source Academic Award 2017. My journey in open source is not a very old one, but or a long one, but it is definitely a very vibrant one so far. But before we talk about trends in open source and discuss ways to go all in, let us just roll back in time a bit. Go back to the year 1998 when the open source term was actually created and the open source initiative was founded. It was basically uh, the initiative was founded so that we could raise awareness, adoption of open development process and environment because open source projects, products or initiatives are those that embrace and celebrate open exchange, collaborative participation, rapid prototyping, transparency, 
community development and so on. So it's about like a community development of a project. Uh, if you see every decade, we've seen like beautiful projects come out like Apache, Python, Ruby, LLVM, FSF, Android. And in 2020, we see a rise of machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow. But when I talk about the medical sciences as impacted by it, the Open Artificial Pancreas Systems Project, which is the Open APS, I know one of the uh, winners of Open Source Award back in the year 2018. They won this award because they contributed to an open and a transparent effort to make safe and effective basic artificial pancreas systems technology widely available worldwide to make quickly improve and save as many lives as possible and reduce the burden of type 1 diabetes. The Open Medical Project, it's a collaboration of health work, healthcare workers, researchers, mobile technology designers, and developers who are tackling health systems problems by creating smartphone applications or smartwatch applications. And this is something that I advocate that by using technology and open source technology in particular, you could help in increasing uh, the awareness about medical sciences and avoid, you know, basically improve the healthcare system around the world. So social coding, which open source is all about has strikingly come across as the latest fashion for it opens up a parallel world of technology keeps the creative juices flowing and furnishes a sense of belongingness to a community when you develop with the community if we turn over to statistics as much as budding techies would like to hop on the bandwagon of open development fear of how when and where to jump betides one of the biggest barricade in their participation an interesting observation was if 68% women and 73% of the men responded to be very interested in making future contributions. This was a survey done by GitHub, but it ended up in actuality only 45% women and 61% men actually do so. So if you see the disparity between the graphs, it's huge. Even in today's world, even after 22 years of open source's existence, with tons of channels to get engaged in this virtual world of working environment. So if you try to dig in for an answer and try to really find why are those numbers so weird? Why is there a huge disparity? Is it because males are superiorly wired or as they say, men are from Mars and women are from Venus? Or is it because the tech is boys club, you know, in high school, that's what it goes about. Or as someone pointed on social media in a very aggressive manner, that GitHub activity is not strongly correlated to open activity for people who are doing open source or in technology like in computer science would know what github means but in my opinion it still reflects a lot but if we do a reality check the reality check is female or non-binary programmers are leaving the tech sphere or they simply just never end up joining it one of the reason could be they find fewer role models to look up for inspiration or because they never achieve a similar level of encouragement or visibility as their counterparts the shyness or missing confidence to ask questions publicly or contribute is the biggest factor as well. And one more thing, are we really going with what the movies tell us that a hacker is equal to thick glasses and heavy beards? Is he someone who really sits in dark, dingy basements and works on his tools? Never in a movie they would show that pretty little girls wearing makeup and skirts can also tinker with tools and hack into anyone's system possible because all you need is a laptop and an internet connection. I did a quick Google search of hackers images and the first images that popped out were this, like just guys, a group of guys, basements, dark places. Why? I just don't understand why people have to hack in the dark always. And recently I was reading a book uh, by Reshma Sajani, Brave Not Perfect. It says that too many of us feel crushed under the weight of our own expectations. We run ourselves ragged trying to please everyone all the time. We lose sleep, ruminating about whether we might have offended someone. And trust me, this is me many days. We pass up opportunities that take us out of our comfort zones. We are different time zones. We are talking to people you've never met online, just like this. And avoid rejection at all costs. In the book, inspired by her famous TED Talk, New York Times bestselling author Reshma Sojani empowers women to embrace imperfection and bravery. It's okay to be imperfect, but it's not okay to be not brave. It's okay to fail. It's better to learn from your mistakes. Only very, very few people get it correct in their first attempt. So this is the social conditioning of always being perfect and always going that extra mile to be above expectations is not what basically holds us back. So today we should all celebrate. We should 
all be brave and we should all force it up free and open source software with everyone not with men women binary non binary we should just include everyone in this and with that to ease out the modus operandi of how we should be taking long strides in this alluring world let us briskly glance over the different tracks we could take our baby steps in to get engaged for a fun and learning experience the first step would of course be join the community go online any project that you like be it medical science be it aerospace engineering there always like software that drives those hardware projects i guess him would also like to agree with me that software forms a big part so if you want to contribute from the you know comfort zone of your home open source is one of the biggest thing that you can contribute to and still learn a lot mailing lists slack channels internet relay chats just try observing others and when you think that you have found the perfect project a coding of course is the classic hit it's a tried and a tested formula fish around for a community that stirs up your spirit of curiosity find a project that is of your interest using tools and technologies you aspire to polish and then you can find those bugs swat those bugs but one thing salient thing that i try to emphasize is that open source is an environment it's a way of actuality it's not all about programming to help overcoming the feel of intimidation i also try to encourage people to take their baby steps via so many other channels possible because coding is something not everyone can know of course if they want to but not everyone is super interested or not everyone is passionate about so why just restrict open source to people who are just interested about coding so the first uh, one is for all the people the newly committed ones then is in the open source project if you have a difficulty while setting up an open source project or you have a difficulty while using an app or using a specific feature there's so many developers out there or compatibility issues you have to report the bug like reporting a bug is in itself a way of contributing to open source because you're telling someone this is wrong but hang in there after you um, after you report the bug you don't have to vanish you can help the developers who might have like pushed a bug patch or a new patch to fix that feature you can always test it because feedback is always highly appreciated in the sphere of peer reviewed development there's not someone a single person who's driving the project as i said it's community driven so you have to help each other out even if you think you cannot solve that bug you can always help provide feedback and then there's read and write documentation this way can never go wrong because documentation forms a pivotal part in bringing everyone aboard to everyone keep updated what's going on you have to improve read existing documentations check for technical errors more than pointing mistakes try and correcting them lend a helping hand in setting up new formats for logging progress latest features of the project jot installation and you know usage instructions build tutorials write tutorials and learn along the way so documentation is something that every kind of technology needs be it aerospace engineering computer science medical science you need to write down so that people who are new can read and know what's happening and then the creative streak you can all if you think you have you know the designers had you can always help refine the look and feel of a project you can build a portfolio you know you think you can have like good design skills can help build new icons interesting themes layouts color schemes you know help the visually disabled contribute in a better user interface so basically these are all the things that you can help contribute to an open source project or any project in general also if you think you i guess most of the people around the world these days you know with so many globalization happening people know at least one or two languages especially for people who are immigrants who move to a different country for work study they always know more than one language one from the home country and one where they're living in so if you think you're adapt in different languages you can build a larger community and engage people by translating your favorite project into your own language it's known that so many projects don't get the traction they could just because they're restricted to english only or maybe just arabic only or chinese only mandarin only so with variety of open source projects yet to reach people with no proficiency in the default language you can localize them and get involved with the customization even big companies like google pay you to help run the translate project to help you know translate words from one language to the other so that they can bring everyone on board and last not the least so thank you to all who have been putting effort best efforts to make this world a better place admire a project an open source project 
support it financially, donate it to ensure that it's continuation and an expression of gratitude. Donate in cash or in kind. You can purchase tickets to their trainings, to their workshops buy subscriptions these not only fund the projects but also dispense a huge amount of personalized content you can assist by paying off external costs help in setting up hosting shared developer spaces motivate others to contribute to open source and get motivated in return and george Eliot, one of my favorite english novelists poet and translator of the times of the victorian era basically said it's never too late to be who you might have been from humble beginnings come great things. So basically you can start off by any project like internet of things, uh, tense machine learning, web engineering, medical projects, Bitcoin and data sciences, data analytics, there's so many things, Android app development, iOS app development that you can start. And to all the role models, to people who are finding role models, go on social media, you'll find so many people. These are the people that I used to follow on Twitter and they would write, you know, good content or like there's so many people I don't even know the names of, but they left a glittery dent in my life. I could never thank my mentors enough, both known and unknown that I had. They would write blogs or tweeted useful stuff that I would link or maybe just like links to scholarships that I ended up winning and I didn't even know who posted that on Twitter. So we should all try to be a role model to someone in our life and I would sincerely ask everyone to just help others and this is a funny story about uh, the image that you see on the screen right now so I wanted to find something about you know mentor mentee relationship on Google and all I found was like a man helping a man or like a man helping a woman or something I wanted like something different like you know with like chants and leaves and something so I made this myself I just took like two women and just cut their heads off like literally and then just pasted this so I think uh, this is a good way of like being a mentor or being a mentee if you think there are different projects uh, different communities you can find local ones like girls who code women in machine learning Anita Borg Institute then there's one for me at work Twitter women they support you and it's not like you always have to participate you can be a silent observer too till you feel comfortable enough it's okay to belong to a community and these are the projects i would like to draw your attention if people are specifically interested in open source projects or hosting an open source project for your domain some of them which i have been a part of as a student as a mentor as a coach and lastly as an organizer they start by including an underrepresented group but go on to build a community, a home-like feeling to many and including me. So they could be like summer of code in space and there's Google summer of code. There's a winter of security for people interested in like web security and outreachy. And sadly the Rails girl summer of code just ended this summer, but still I would, I wanted to highlight this. And lastly, I would like to say, look up at the stars, try to make sense of what you see and wonder what about makes, what makes the universe exist be curious and this sense of curiosity will always take you places if you're always curious about you know just why this happens instead of like accepting the just whatever is happening around you and stephen hawking he's one of my favorite persons and one of the role models and he said this and i'm so happy and with that i would like to say let us all aspire to inspire people all around us and let us engage budding hackers thanks a lot Thank you very much, Sylvia. That was actually a very inspiring talk and a great talk for me, even though I'm not a coder and anything, but it's, it's great. So we have a lot of comments and a lot of uh, questions for you. First of mm -hmm. all, Vanu is asking you if you have any network to offer for open source software engineering. Okay, sure. So uh, the best I would say is like follow people on Twitter and then uh, the programs that I mentioned like Google Summer of Code, Outreach, these are the good programs. And even if you don't want to participate in programs, just visit their websites or something. They always have linked to the community channels. And the first step that I mentioned is always join the community. The project that you think are interested in, like go to GitHub, find the, they always have a link to a Slack channel or mailing list or IRC. Join that and then from there you would get to know like, okay, how do I proceed? And uh, basically that's what I did. I just like randomly joined like an IRC channel back in 2014 and randomly wrote on an, oh, hi, I'm Jigas, I'm interested in open source, how can I start? Like those were my first sentence and I still don't know where did I find that courage to, you know, go to like those uh, developers and write this, but yeah, just be a silent observer and this is awesome. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, thank you very much. So Blanca Flores is asking, what is the most important skill to learn for someone interested in entering the field of machine learning? Mm -hmm. Sure, so for machine learning, I would suggest, make sure your basics are right, like statistics, probability, linear algebra, calculus. These are mathematical skills that you would need. And apart from that, make sure that you have a framework at hand, like maybe TensorFlow, maybe SKLearn. Just take those and uh, clear up your fundamentals. I would say you don't have to know very high fi because whenever you join a company or like a startup, every each one would have their different frameworks. So just brushing up your uh, statistics and basic machine learning algorithms be supervised or unsupervised and knowing two examples of each and how to implement in a coding environment like TensorFlow or Escalon, that should be enough to get you started. Okay, thank you. Uh, so our first speaker, Ying Wan Lo, asks, uh, she's trying, she's tried very hard to break the stereotypes of engineer and coder while there is some progress. What advice do you have in this area? Uh, advice to break the stereotypes. I, mm -hmm. I would like to say just ignore what negative, like it comes with practice and it comes with a lot of mental strength, inner strength, that you have to ignore what bad words or like people try to demean you and always find your strength in people who try to, you know, support you. In initial days, I used to find that support in my mom and my dad because my dad himself is from a computer science background and he basically inspired me to pursue that path. And I might not share everything with my like, you know, friends and my peers because I was a little hesitant and I used to share everything with one person that was my father for me. And I used to try to ignore all other things. And I know it, it can be very uh, difficult for people to do that because it requires a lot of mental strength. But I would say like, let your work speak, let your action speak and just keep ignoring and keep hustling. And one day, hopefully, we'll reach up and, of course, mentor others so that there are more people like you in this domain. Uh, so Banu asks again, what excites you most about your job? So what excites about most about my job is like not like every day is so different, so different because uh, I train a lot of machine learning models or like I do feature engineering, I tune hyperparameters, I'm on like basically my laptop all day, but still it feels like each day is different because I still now I'm getting to learn so much, even though it's been more than a year that I started my new job. But yeah, I've been learning a lot every day and I hope I don't reach that stagnant level. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our third speaker, Sandy Shah, uh, is asking if the open source is only done via com uh, competition because she has done open source through Hack Hacktoberfest and Google Cloud Platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course, as I mentioned, you can always join the community via GitHub or uh, there's so many projects hosted online and you know, need not do it via a, like a program per se, but these are my personal experiences that I did. And the only positive side I would say for doing via a program is like, you get like a sense of completion. You get a sense of, oh, uh, there's like a specific timeline that you have to follow. But of course you're always welcome to do it. Those are summer programs and you can do it all around, like all through the year. This is not something specific that you have to do. Okay. So we have a comment from uh, Ying Wan Lo. Um, she knows that people do hackathons, editing Wikipedia to add more women in science and reduce bias. So she thinks that that's a great open source effort too. It's, it's a yeah. for you. <laughs> yes. And the last question is from Chloe Jordan. Uh, so for people with medical background, and actually I, um, I, I can also ask this question as a PhD student, because even though we uh, we are mostly in the lab. We also sometimes need to code, so it's something that we have to learn. Um, where should we start? Mm -hmm. Where do you suggest we should start coding? So uh, in ke in ke yeah, so it all I guess it all depends on what the ultimate goal is. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the medical background, uh, to be honest. But as I said, I know folks who worked in the Open Pancreas Project and Open Medicine Projects. So usually they do it in conjugation with the developers out there. So if you want to start coding, let's say you want to contribute to like 
mobile mobile applications that uh, would help track the healthcare system or you know maybe just track healthcare issues like smartwatch applications maybe try something related to android or ios or maybe web development that i would like to suggest but since i'm not that tech with medical science i have not much idea about that okay thank you very much and uh, now we will go to our third thank speaker you. that uh, dr banu will present thank you jigya again yeah uh Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our amazing uh, guests across the world are amazing female engineers uh, who have achieved success in their fields. Thank uh, you uh, for this presentation, Jig uh, Sawa. And uh, our third uh, speaker is Tanisha. Uh, she's an uh, engineer by profession, but a blogger by passion. Uh, a computer science engineer has experience with web technologies and digital marketing and uh, her presentation is named as I am possible. Uh, let's listen to Tavi. Uh, welcome. Tavi, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hope we all are having a good time here. So, am I audible to you? Yes, we can see okay. and we can hear you. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, so I will continue with my talk here. And uh, I would like to say you that uh, I, I am, um, uh, this is a, I'm really grateful to be part of International Women in Engineering. And uh, here's the platform to bridge the gap between clinicians and engineers. So, that's a very great motive. And uh, I am, uh, so I, I will, uh, I will, I would like to go informally with the talk. Okay. Uh, I, I will uh, tell you my experience, my journey to things. So first of all, let me introduce you and let, uh, let me share my screen. Great. Okay. So I am Tanvi Shah. I am VTech final year student uh, doing my internship with Webby Technologies. Apart from this, what gives me a unique identity is comes from the communities. It's an uh, uh, amazing journey since 2017 and you will get an overview of this year. Okay, so first of all, if someone says, I have done all this thing on my basis, on my things, so this is not right, you know. It is all about pushing and holding each other and growing together. It's all about, we, we uh, engineers and clinicians are wide to different professions, but, uh, but we need each other to grow and to support, to support and being together. So, uh, uh, you know, in this, in this uh, time of COVID-19, in this pandemic time, uh, we are, uh, okay, we are having the uh, lots of things. In the advancement of medical, medical times, we are, have a, uh, we are having the future technologies work. And this again leads to the technology. Means these are all interconnected. In short, uh, learning never stops and changes are mandatory. Everyone have their own journey of uh, achieving something. From my point of view, it comes with five stepping stones. First is opportunity. You know, see that knowledge comes with the uh, experience. Okay, I'll, I'll try to share my... Okay, I'll, I'll try to share my things here. Oh, till the last time we don't have it, we have to try almost all the opportunities. At the beginning, you don't know the things, you know. You are like, uh, you don't know the things. You just try. You have to just uh, put it into, uh, into it and challenge yourself. Uh, from my point of view, I will share you two things. There is GDG Baroda and WTM Baroda. GDG is Google Developers Group. WTM is Women Tech Makers. So I have joined this group since 2017. And we all are having these things uh, right from uh, back. So uh, when I joined it for the first time, I didn't knew what I was actually doing there. But a journey from a speaker, uh, from a you know attendee to be a uh, to be a core team member, then speaker to be uh, available to the nearby GTG families was a great journey. 
so there was a time i didn't knew how to use twitter but then uh, one day i uh, for a event i got it i got uh, to handle social media account for women technicals because i was good at content writing so then i learned how to handle it and after 6 months there was a dev fest a yearly fest of gdg where i won the twitter contest almost among 500 500 of people so it's like it's not like i don't know and i i will I, i'm not i don't know and i will not do it it's like i don't know but i will learn it so it's a play, it's a place where you learn and grow where you get back to community it's like give and take i have i have i have contributed to open source like i have said in hector face hector face google cloud platforms then i have wrote the blog on uh, so official sites of the websites then presented tech and non tech uh, things i have did was podcast podcast also but then uh, in the picture it comes interest once when you uh, once when you dive in all the opportunities it's not necessary we get we go through all of them so interest comes next uh, making chance for all the opportunities is not necessary thing what i have find about myself that i am uh, i got very good through blogging at, uh, because at my college times i used to i used to do blogging and uh, that was non tech that was non tech but then uh, uh, there was people you know if i don't do on times they used to say me also google adsense was approved on my non tech blog then i used to write on medium medium is a software where you write official blogs uh, official things so it's like a technical uh, it's like you know you are writing things i, I wrote about uh, angular angular things and then uh, 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 the last was women tech makers india where i have joined five days or uh, four days of meetups and i have wrote a blogs on that and it interest is where you uh, where you see where you want to be in the future it's about the goals so where you, uh, it may be the programming language language you want to learn or maybe company you want to be there in the future or some other hobbies uh, so it it can uh, interest may include a little thing like it can be your networking you know people are there at technical events but maybe sometimes they are not for the tech they connect with people they network with people and and sometimes get greater exposures so it's like uh, you get there you know there you you uh, you know your or you improve your communic- communication skills and get to know better people and learn more so in this story it's like you first you find go through all the maybe most of the opportunities then you find more, your your own interest which you have to be pursue ahead after that in, once you find your interest dedication is must you know if you if you just find your interest and you don't have a dedication to of towards a thing means how can you uh, consider through it because sometimes uh, we have to continue and continue doing all the things but and some day it will be summed up to be back to us in a magical way you know i i would like to say that i am here because of my uh, you know uh, most of the things i may have done i may have been noticed some day from someone so you know you get a chance one by one still i i i, uh, I would like to say no i would uh, this is my first time and i'm i'm not really ready for the things so i may i may just uh, make a mess set up but i'm really sorry and i thank you to give this opportunity this is my first first talk so i will always remember this thing that i have learned from here i have i have done the mess there then i have learned things and i'm i'm doing good for the future so yeah i i have done things uh, but sometimes you know people are not able to see the hard things which you have done before and uh, it's like they only just see the success but it's okay we are doing for ourselves not for the others so you can do for your own things you can learn it uh, you know i have i have uh, uh, attended ng india that's an international event for angular at delhi so first at the first time when i heard i have attended its meetups at the at the regional level first so when i have heard it is in delhi so i was like i might, I, i might have thought that i may not have i have been able to attend at delhi because of must might be of uh, distance or place or company or whatever but uh, uh, only i know once i have made up my mind what i have not done to be there i have done i have called number of people i have done everything i have i have, I have done various tasks to be involved in the things so it was a it was a great thing at least at last i have attended them so it's like uh, you know if once you have failed giving all your dedication it's like uh, at the end you won't regret that you know you might not have tried you might not even even tried so it's like you have tried and if you get success it's it's well and good you will be damn satisfied but it's if it's not you have to learn through it process through it 
go through your failures and do more again so i as i was speaking first for play failure so uh, i would like to say that failure is a part of success you know uh, i have not worked professionally i am just an intern uh, i just uh, intern intern for 3 months and other 3 months of my last college years was is now uh, you know on hold because of the covid 19 so it's like i have not even worked professionally so i don't have any you know uh, professional tips but i would like to share from my college life so i have a number of projects done Uh, there and I I have I have failed certain of certain of times uh, and I have uh, you know I have done the info full infographics website and I have did Photoshop for from from there uh, and made the uh, I have done very I think we have a connection problem now. Hope she will be back soon. Now we are waiting for her. Yes, we have a connection problem with Tanvi. Yeah, hope she will be back here. Yes, sometimes uh, it happens. It's part of the Zoom calls. Yeah, this happens. Nobody should worry. We By will the just way, wait for her. Yeah, we are waiting for her. When I was introducing her, I didn't say that she was a public speaker. Uh, actually, she was describing herself as a public speaker in LinkedIn, and also she showed she could show that because she doesn't use a presentation and she's just she's just like a, just a real public speaker. Actually, I actually could um, smell her dedication from miles away when she was telling about her story. So it was very nice and inspiring. Is that because? She is still a student uh, at the same time as an intern, so this is very inspiring for uh, young girls, I think, because before the graduation you can do lots of things. Just and actually from different fields you can do lots of things. Just being a blogger, being a public speaker, working on your fields, preparing yourself to your future plans, or some new, uh, you know, uh, new innovative uh, projects. So this is a very nice uh, sample for young young girls. I think. Hope she will be uh, 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 us. She will be with us soon. Yes, I think Tanvi is with us. Is back with us. Can you hear us, Tanvi? Can you talk? Yeah, I can. Can try. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, is there something else that you want to say to us, or shall we start with the yeah, question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I need to say. So I was there on the college projects. So actually, I I lost the connect connection. So I'm I'm really sorry for all the mess. So I uh when when I did the project. So for our final year project, I have the we have worked on the career trend, and that my paper is published on the International Journal of Computer Science and Mobile Computing. so that's a that was that was a last satisfaction when i you know it's like all the projects were failed but the our last uh, final year project was published in the international journal so we were uh, it was all good and so uh, now i want to like to speak uh, related to clinicians and engineers so uh, i would i would talk to the view of uh, this pandemic so you know now in this time it is the engineers and the clinicians who are the doctors who are ruling this world because now all all the world is world is connected to the tech that that comes engineer where comes engineers in pictures and you know to go back to the normal life we need doctors so it's like uh, it's like we we are we are now the on the best part of part of the thing and we are we are going uh, to the uh, you know maybe may bad times but we are all connected we will grow together and we'll have a you know better future so yeah thank you thank you so much and thank you for having me we, uh, It was, it was so nice to have a talk to connect with you all. So thank you. It was very nice to uh, listen you, uh, Tanvi, because uh, uh, as I said before, you are very young and you started to do lots of things uh, before graduation. So it was very nice to listen you. Uh, just uh, and I yeah, very very enjoyed to. Uh, what you when you are telling with your using your hands just you are a real public speaker <laughs> i like <it> so much <laughs> thank you for this uh, you know uh, energetic uh, presentation 
yeah. and uh, we have some questions to you. Um, actually, you are not you are a student at the same time. You are an intern, and you are doing some new projects on your fields. Uh, but um, what was the most unexpected thing in your uh, career path? This uh, short but very uh, full career path. What was the things uh, un un uh, most unexpected thing? Okay, I would like to say that you know I, I cannot I cannot say it's the career path because actually my <laughs> career has not even started. It's like but this uh, actually this can uh, this shows what you will do uh, in the future. <laughs> you give. Um, yeah. Lots of clues. So uh, that was very nice. It, we we can talk about a career path. I think. <laughs> I'm going to. I I assure you, I'm going to do a lot of lot of good things, lot of talks, and I will remember this talk as my you know first thing. I I I'll, I'll share, yeah, cherish great. it always. Yeah. So uh, if I talk about the career path, uh, apart from the college, I have gone through the communities and things. So going first of all, I was not that interactive or things. So getting through getting through their getting through their uh, communities. Uh, be talking with them uh, and not jumping through each technologies you know if you are going through one so learn from uh, one uh, you know there are times when you have to understand if you want to learn from a single mentor or you know uh, how how you want to go through uh, you if you want to learn from a single mentor or you want to got different opinions that depends on your project so yeah. it's like uh, there are different things in that way and if Attended hackathons, so it's like uh, I have I have get I have got uh, things from all the faculties, teachers. We have done a lot of hackathons online, so it was like a, a a bit ahead for the career path because you know studies are not the thing. You know it, it it is not related to the professional world. When you come out of the things of college, so it is a, it is about theory about about things. So you learn yeah. practical life and you learn to choose how to how to do it. And the best thing I learned in my internship of three months, I just interned for three months. Uh, to debug you know uh, it, it's not uh, because when it comes to technology to career in programming so it's uh, it's always about the faults and errors yeah. so you should learn how to debug yourself there are number of errors there are sources available yeah. on stack overflow and things so you have to know it all yourself and do it you know yourself and be great uh, yeah and uh, it's difficult to move towards a more diverse and equitable landscape in these fields you know in engineering fields uh, do you have some plans to change this do you want uh, do you have uh, all we are fighting to something uh, sometimes uh, when we are trying to uh, create our own career paths in this uh, to find a more diverse and equitable landscape so do you have some um, plans uh, ideas about changing this okay I would like to surely, surely share it. Uh, it may not be out of the engineering, but you know, I would like to engage more with the communities and the Google things because I have been too much deep into the Google communities. So I, as I said, I, I have attended the Angular India uh, that uh, event at Delhi. So I was, I am really interested in that. You know, apart from the career and job, or job or my own business or whatever. Uh, the other passion thing or the other interest I would like to follow is uh, baby blogging or uh, or you know Google there are different opportunities you know if I design give the first talk so it may be step by step one by other thing uh, I would like to be a, a mentor a mentor someday or you know expert Google developer experts so there it's it, it's you know dreams dreams have no end you can work for it you can dream and you can just do wonders so that's yeah. all I want to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, what were your favorite subjects at your school? Because we will record this, uh, we are recording this uh, presentation, so many students, maybe high school girls uh, and boys will uh, watch this and they want, they will be, uh, they will try to be like you. Uh, maybe you can talk about your plans when you were a child, when you were at high school, what suggests did you enjoy? Were you planning to be a computer scientist before? Yeah. So yeah, there. Are, uh, if you are in college, you know, in your college student, there are various number of different subjects. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there will be networking, hardware part, software part, programming. But what yeah. I like the most was programming. So you know, coding is first. May you may be tough. You know, how to code for the five stars. You know, you maybe most of us may have uh, done Java. So that's like five stars, uh, four stars. You know, it may be tough coding. But once you get interested in it, you know, uh, you know. There's little interest always needed. 
if you are not interested you will not get uh, you will not want to do it so uh, my plans uh, see i told you at the time i i joined the community so i didn't ha- didn't had any idea of how to do it but you have to find you, because every year engineers are passing in the likes of numbers so you should have your different identity identity other than only the degree it may be yeah. community it may be some other thing it may be you are you are doing projects on your own it may be you are doing something uh, if you are mechanical or civil you are making small projects you are you are working on machines at home it can be any small thing you know uh, it's not like uh, because i as i said engineers are passing numbers so you should have something unique in your own that you can share you know at the time of interviews i have i have passed correct like, number of interviews number of uh, online tests so you know it's it's quite uh, online tests are a bit tricky for me but interviews are, are like just always i i knew i can i can crack all the interviews <laughs> because of my any speaking skill or uh, communication you know i was i'm quite confident with the things so it's like uh, be confident and believe in yourself learn things learning is mandatory because you never achieve success you know once you achieve something you you should learn you should think i i should learn the next thing you should learn the next thing so uh, success is not a, you achieve some point you achieve a thing but su- success is not a word you know yeah you should because at the age of 16 learning never stops you should learn and learn new things if you get interest there because you know as a student i not only pro- programming and things speaking communities i like other things too i like you know uh, if uh, right uh, if uh, speaking to uh, things uh blogging or dancing seriously I, i'll be honest with the things i follow on i follow things on instagram twitters and i i like influencers and i i as a, a part of me always wanted to be an influencer i like it so as a student uh, i am sorry if i'm uh, talking more but as a student mm-hmm. i am i'm now at the point of time i am wide a variety of things maybe one day i'll choose a, a one career path so Uh, yeah these are all the things you can continue follow your follow your mind follow your interest and you will be you know achieve something one day great thank you for your answers to our questions and one more question do you have your role models as we asked to all speakers uh, what excuse me uh do you have role models uh, do, uh are there any people inspires you inspire you so uh apart uh, so uh, i have things in different uh, various categories i i'll not uh, i'll not you know i don't know uh, first of all uh, being in this uh, in this area in this genre i like kalpana chawla maybe i don't know her i don't read much about her but you know this was, she was the first indian uh, going through there so you know when people don't even think think of a thing that she dreamed about it and achieved it so you know i once uh, once at a time i like uh, i i very much uh, you know uh, and i really adore her and you know i told a part of me always wanted to be an influencer so i, I like uh, influencers you know who people who uh, blog youtubers I so see. they are my they are my you know i i learn from them daily i i i love their and uh, most of people i get from communities because at the time i didn't knew much thing but i have i have always found people helping me you know uh, so uh, there are people from my communities maybe you don't know but actually they are my role models they have made me to do different things to ha- achieve something to push me uh, one thing is i i have never uh, you know uh, uh, discovered i never let myself down you know i, I just pushed myself my boundaries so effort was effort was mine but they helped all over the uh, all over the way so i am just thankful to them and you should have role model you should follow them but have your unique identity don't lose yourself so that's the thing i want to say thank you thank you <laughs> thank you for your answer uh this was a great presentation uh, from tanvi uh, she was our third speaker and today's session uh is um today we had three speakers and uh, we all listened to them uh on uh, maybe lena want to talk uh, about our uh, next um, webinars on for on july because our uh, real aim uh, was highlighting the background in engineering to talk about career paths success or and to inspire other clinicians engineers to become successful for innovation and future plans 
So these uh, presentations were amazing and there will be more amazing uh, webinars on July and she will, uh, Diana will uh, talk about the next webinars now. Thank you very much, Banu. Yes, uh, the first day was actually great. I, even though I'm not an engineer, it was very great to listen to some success stories. Thank you very much to all our speakers once again for taking your time, for waking up early for this, for some of you. Um, it was really great. Uh, so right now I would like to talk a little bit about the organization as well, because as you all know, it's been core, uh, these webinar sessions have been uh, co-organized by Clinician Engineer Hub and the EIT Health alumni community. So who are we and what do we do? Me, as a part of both, I am both the strategy lead for Europe of the Clinician Engineer Hub and the board member of the EAT Health Alumni. would like to talk a little bit first about both of those communities and then to talk a little bit about our next webinars. So the Clinician uh, Engineer Hub is aiming to bridge the gap between the medicine and engineering. It is an international hub and it is a non-profit organization that uh, tries to bring together both the clinicians and the biomedical engineering field and provide talented medical students and clinicians exposure to the world of clinical medicine, the challenges uh, the, uh, to challenge doctors face in uh, diagnosing and treating patients and how to potentially solve these issues with cutting edge engineering solutions. And of course, this was the, um, the whole idea of these webinars as well, is to bring some of the success stories of our, of our speakers and to try to push forward for our students and people who want to, uh, to continue the engineering or the clinician field. As, a, as the EIT Health Alumni Network, we are the multidisciplinary community of innovators building the future of healthcare. Our uh, aim is to be, to work uh, by alumni for alumni. And uh, as a member of our community, you can expand your own professional network, you can develop valuable career skills, receive exclusive opportunities, and contribute to sharing healthcare innovation in Europe. So as for our mission, we support the EIT Health by building an active network of alumni dedicated to activities to improve quality of life, active aging, and healthcare across Europe. And as for our vision, we want to become the leading European Association of Health, Social and Life Sciences Professionals, Entrepreneurs, Innovators, and Executives. And because we are now all together in this webinar, I would like to welcome everyone to register in the EIT Health Alumni Community and become part of this great family, as I call it, because it's not just a community, it's a family, uh, and start actually getting all the opportunities that we have for all of you and not only opportunities of events like this one, but also some job opportunities because our platform that I just published in our uh, chat group is open for everyone. And what we want is actually to bring you all the good things, jobs and opportunities. So please register. As for the next webinar session, we will have next week on Saturday again, another webinar session with some great speakers. So join us again at uh, 7 p.m. in England and 1 p.m. in uh, 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 United States, sorry. And please, uh, we welcome everyone and the more the better. We, what we, our idea is to bring together the, the great speakers and to try to push forward for female engineers. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, right now, I would like to uh, ask everyone to turn on their camera so that we can make a nice group picture. And once again, thank you all, all the participants as well for all the great questions, for taking your time. I know it's a Saturday, it's 4th of July, but it's great to have you all here. Okay, we still have some people. Thank Family you so much for organizing this. Thank you very much. Okay, Faisal is with us. 
we don't have Tanvi that presented. Oh, okay, everything is fine. Some people don't have their cameras, okay. So let's take a picture then. Smile. Yeah. Done. Okay, thank you all. And I hope thank to you see you again next week at six, uh, 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Karina. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.